Laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level, whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. Welcome to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, where a right is always a right, not a privilege. All right, as we say, rounding third and head toward home, head into the last hour of Gun Talk today. Glad that you could be with us. I'm Tom Gresham. Our number, if you'd like to join us, very easy, Tom Talk Gun or 866-TALK-GUN, whichever you prefer. And we're open lines if you'd like to share stories of uh, your summer activities. Are you doing any shooting? I know a lot of families go out and do more shooting in the summer because kids are out of school. We talked about going to museums, gun museums, which is pretty cool. We'll actually be broadcasting from a gun museum next week. We're having some fun there. Uh, basically, you know, there's all sorts of new things going on all the time. New guns, new activities, even new shooting sports that keep popping up, which is very cool. A lot of things you can get involved with, all right? So there you go. Um, one of the things that I'm proud of, what our team does, we have a lot of first at Gun Talk. We were the first national gun show or radio show about guns. We had the first online video site about guns. We're talking way back. Uh, we have the first gun-centric uh, smartphone app in Gun Dealio, which I hope you have on your smartphone. It's very cool stuff. And then we also had the first television show that talks about what's new in guns and and showing a lot of product and what's cool, what's new, and all of that. And that's called Guns and Gear, and we're just about to hit uh, 10 years. Joining me to talk about that is the executive producer and the host of Guns and Gear Television, Ryan Gresham. Hey there. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so we are, what, 10 years? Is this our 10th season of Guns and Gear? season 11 is about to start. Oh, my gosh, it just goes by so fast. Holy cow. That's right. (laughs) So the, the very idea, and this was, i got to give credit, this was your idea. The idea behind Guns and Gear was what? Well, you know, I guess 11 and a half or so years ago, we were looking at the outdoor TV landscape, and there were a ton of hunting shows, and there still are. Um, mm-hmm. But for the shooters out there, I think really the only show that was really doing it and been doing it for a while would be Shooting USA. Jim Scout, and those guys do a good job right. with that show. And that show focuses mostly on competition shooting. Um, Mm -hmm. But we said, you know, there are a lot of gun enthusiasts out there who are really interested in the gear, whether that's the guns, the optics, the ammo, the accessories. Uh, They wanted to Mm -hmm. know more about those products. And the products were being used in shows. You, but you weren't really getting the the details of you know how how. How do they work, and why are they great, or or whatever? So, right, right. That's yeah, kind of, that's you might see idea. somebody, yeah, you might see somebody carrying a rifle on a deer hunt, but you didn't take out the range and really ring it out, or talk about what makes it cool, or what were the innovations and that kind of thing. So you thought, hey, we can do that, and so kind of got started. Now, I love the season. Now, when do when does the new season start? Uh, let's see, new season starts um, this week, and. Um, we're airing on the Sportsman Channel, and the mm-hmm. times for that would be Thursday evening, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and then they run it again Thursday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern, so three hours later. And then there, we have some, uh, some re-airs on um, Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Eastern, Fridays, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. But, um, you know, if you, don't, if you can't tune in then, set your DVR or whatever, but also, if you go, well, I don't know if I get Sportsman Channel. Um, I know they're on Sling TV, and mm, okay. then we will be, after the, the original, uh, we call it, you know, first run on the network airs, we will be posting mm. these segments on the Gun Talk Roku channel, the Gun Talk um, Apple TV channel, the Gun Talk Amazon Fire channel, as well as our YouTube, YouTube. And, and all of other places. Okay, so uh, be right on Sportsman Channel live. Set your DVR that way you can you don't want to miss any of them. All right, so talk a little bit about the guns and the the cool stuff that we've been able to play with this season. Yeah, you know, you would think 
there's nothing left to do that could be new from these companies. Right. They've been doing a really good job with new products over the last several years. But, I mean, some of the, the things just that come to mind uh, highlight-wise, um, shooting six hours variations of MPX um, pistols and rifles. Um, well, I guess the MPX would be a pistol. But, like, the cane right. break is super, super short. Um, and then they've got some... They've got this new 320 Legion X series that I did not want to give too much away, but they actually did something special with the polymer to make the gun heavier. And you go, well, that's did we talk of, about that we, yet? I don't know. I just think we just did. Sorry. I, I, yeah, cause I got, so, there's some of the stuff we have to say, well, can, when can we talk about that? Well, we're not sure. So I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking as you're talking, I'm thinking, now, I know they told us not to talk about that until a certain date. I don't know if we're there yet. But, okay, right. so you may have just let the cat out of the bag, but it's a very well, cool pistol. Well, anymore. It's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got some new stuff happening with the P365. Again, I'm not sure. Um, you know, we have our embargo dates, and we plan that with when those episodes are going to launch. Uh, but right. they, actually, I know everyone knows about the pre-365. They love it. Well, they, I'm sorry, but they've done new stuff to it that makes it even cooler. Well, it, <laughs> well they, did, they did some cool. Everybody says, okay, yeah, they did this, this. And I'm just telling you, they did one thing with it that in my wildest dreams I could not have imagined. And I've never seen anything like it. And it, the first time you look at it, you think, well, that's just dumb. And then when you shoot it, you go, Holy cow! That yeah, is a game, game changer. changer right? I mean, yep, it really is, and it's kind of like you're just not. I mean, I would love to be able to tell you today, but you'll be able to see it on Guns and Gear. Also, you yeah. did some trips. You went up to went out to see uh, Daniel Defense. Yeah, we went out to see Daniel Defense, see what they're up to, um, test out their DD5 and their Delta 5. So the Delta 5 is their bolt action rifle, and the DD5 right. is their kind of AR-10 platform uh, updated DD-5. Um, we went out to FTW Ranch with Ruger, and we rang out a bunch of rifles, including a couple different rifles in 6.5 PRC and 300 PRC, which are some kind of newer uh, cartridges developed by Hornady. The 6.5 PRC is like a 6.5 Creedmoor Magnum. Is an easy right. way to think about it. You're getting 200 to 300 feet more a sec, uh, feet per second, and then the 300 PRC is a uh, to not get too geeky on you. It's kind of a a newer, better um, 300 Win Mag, similar to that, but you're able to load longer right. bullets in it. So uh, really take advantage of shooting targets at long distance. And we did that 2,000 yards. 2,000 yards. 2,000 yards, uh, oh, and you'll be able to see us making that attempt at hitting the target 2,000 yards. With <laughs> making that attempt. PRC. I, I, we, I suspect you probably hit something out there, I guarantee we, you. Hey, you always hit something when you pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, and I know that you got to tinker around with some optics. I think, did you just do a shoot with or had a shoot plan with Crimson Trace and uh, some other folks? Yep, we did some stuff with Crimson Trace. We did some stuff with ATN. ATN has a really cool uh, new thermal scope that is for for just to put it in perspective, it's twelve hundred dollars for thermal, which is instead really of unreal. instead of eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Instead of eight thousand nine thousand dollars for a thermal rifle scope, it's twelve hundred dollars, and you can go out and hunt at night wow. and go chase hogs or whatever you you know you can do in your state um whatever's legal yeah yeah we, we also shot streak ammo now this is if oh, you haven't heard about neat. streak ammo it is cool mm -hmm. yeah it is it's it's and it's 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 not what you think it is when you shoot it it does in fact look like a tracer but there's no pyrotechnics in it basically it's a it, this is they're going to kill me for saying it this way it's a sticker on the back of the uh. bullet that, that absorbs the light flash from the powder igniting when it goes off, and the back of the bullet glows for like a second or two, but that's pretty long enough to get down range. So you see this literally this streak going right. out. It is really neat. Photo. I guess it's. I think it's photoluminescent paint or some sort of uh, coating they put on the back of the bullet, and yeah, it, it glows. You're able 
it only goes for, you know, about a second. Well, the bullet's going, you know, 1,200 feet per second. So in a second, it's, yeah. it's kind of far. <laughs> it's... It's already hit it hit what it was going after it here. Hey, Ryan, hold exactly. on a second here. I'm going to take a quick break and get you back in here because I want to talk about some of the other cool products and also kind of get your sense of uh, where we're going as an industry with products. So we're talking with Ryan Gresham from the Guns and Gear TV show. We'll be right back. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. You want to reach for history, for greatness. So reach for the FN 5.7, a 5.7 millimeter pistol built with the DNA of over a century of legendary FN firearms. And now, it's within reach at your local firearms dealer. The FN 5.7 is the perfect combination of accuracy and stopping power. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. For 25 years, Crimson Trace has led the industry in laser and light technology and customer service. Now, Crimson Trace is proud to offer electronic sights and rifle scopes for tactical, target, and hunting applications. With the same Crimson Trace offer of free batteries for life on all products. The new rifle scope line is also backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty from the brand that you have trusted for over two decades. Find out more at CrimsonTrace.com. All right, we're talking with Ryan Gresham. He's the host of the Guns and Gear television show, which begins airing this week. 11th season starts this week on Sportsman Channel. We've got to set your DVR for that. Uh, Ryan, one of the things uh, Jim was asking me during the break, he said on the uh, Streak Ammo, uh, he said, you know, are they selling those as, as bullets you can reload? They're not. They're, I think they're just selling the loaded ammo, right? I think right now it's just the loaded ammo. Uh, but they are they offer it in both uh, Full Metal Jacket and Hollow Point. And uh, I think they're just going to continue expanding it because I believe they have have kind of have the, the patent on the technology. And mm-hmm. they can put this this uh, treatment onto pretty much any bullet. So they can kind of just keep expanding out from there of what they're doing with it. But, well, this, you know, it's let, actually... Let me it, jump it really in because you, yeah, you, you mentioned the hollow point. People say, well, what would that be about? For your defensive ammo, you're in a low-light situation. It, and we've done this so much with guns and gear and all the other things we've done and uh, FPD, is that you can't see your hits. And sometimes you can't see your sights, even if it's close up. But if you could actually see the bullet in flight, you can adjust. Put the first shot, you go, oh, that's a little bit low. And you will reflexively, without even thinking about it, you will adjust and start putting bullets where they're supposed to go. And, and you did that. You actually did that when we were shooting at the range. Yeah, it's true. And that, that was kind of my thing. I go, well, this is fun. I mean, you know, you, it's like you're shooting laser beams. But what's the purpose? And there is a purpose. I mean, because, and especially if you're missing like if you're shooting mm-hmm. in low light, and there are a lot of low light matches out there, um, and you're shooting at a target, you, you can't tell where you're missing. Um, mm. But if you see this streak of light going, you go, "Oh, I'm low left," and then yeah, you you just your brain kind of goes, "Okay, adjust." Yeah, it is. It's like watching uh, the water hose when you're spraying; you just automatically spray, move it on up where it needs to go. All right, so. Let me ask you, you talk to all the gun companies, you get to work with everybody, you're talking out there, 
it seems to me like there's just more new stuff coming out faster than I've ever seen. There's new stuff, and there certainly are a few trends that we're seeing right now. Um, definitely trending towards long range, hitting targets at long range. So um, okay. that goes with rifles, the optics, the ammo, um, the, the accessories like bipods and rests and all of those things and the targets to let you know if you're hitting. Long range is definitely hot right now. The other mm-hmm. thing that we're seeing as a trend is, and you see it for a few years, but it's just becoming uh, more common, more available, is putting small optics, like little red dot optics, on handguns, on pistols. Um, that's expanding greatly. I mean, it, the guns that they're doing this to are getting smaller and smaller, and the optics are getting smaller. And now it's getting, it was kind of, a, I would say, two or three years ago, they were doing it, but it was more of like, okay, this is a competition gun. This is a big full-size right. gun. Now right. you're seeing it on guns that you could carry. And I'm hearing people, if, you know what's changed is that people were talking about, man, well, maybe you, know, you could use it for carry. And in the last year, or really only the last 12 months, I'm starting to hear from trainers who I really respect saying, yes, optics on your carry gun are a good idea. They make a lot of sense. And then that's when you start to say, okay, I'm going to start paying attention because these are people I respect saying this. Right. And I think that anybody who tries it out um, realizes that you're, because it's something new, it's a different way to aim the gun, you need to train with it. You get to practice with it. It's got to become, mm-hmm. um, you know, where there's not a lot of effort to it. But there is a reason why when a shooter is given no, I would say no rules, basically, a competition shooter in an open division, basically right. do whatever you, the heck you want to the gun to make you shoot as fast and as accurate as possible, they put an optic on the gun. Every time. Interesting. Good deal. All right, sir. And if people want to know more about uh, the Guns and Gear show and all the rest of the stuff, I guess guntalk.com is still the best place to go. Sure. Go to guntalk.com, or you can go to our Facebook page, Gun Talk Facebook page, um, our, our you know Twitter, Instagram. We're on all those social media platforms, and we'll be putting it out there. Also, sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter. Um, we send out you know cool, good articles. We send out deals going on around uh, each week, and uh, and yeah, you'll be able to find out what's going on on Guns of Gear this year. You can save, save money with the newsletter, but also uh, there's some really interesting stories. Some are just uh, hunting stories. Some are you know behind-the-scenes stuff of what we've been up to. Uh, it's basically just good articles. Yeah, all kinds of good gun t- content. There you go. Ryan Gresham, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's go to the phones. Let's see here. Um, do, 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 oh, range support. Line five. Lee is with us in the UP of Michigan. Hello, Lee. What you been shooting? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the pin shoot down in Central Lake. It's a continuation, sort of, of the uh, uh, the old second chance bowling pin shoot. Right, We're shooting bowling pins. And uh, yeah, they're back shooting bowling pins. And uh, Richard Davis is still running the range and. Uh, he uh, wow. he's he's still doing comedy as well. <laughs> and I had not thought about Richard Davis pistol. in many years. Yeah, he developed the second chance uh, ballistic uh, vest, uh, bulletproof vest, and mm-hmm. he was. I mean, through the seventies and eighties, he was a huge factor in, in making a lot of waves out there. Well, talk yeah. for a second about shooting bowling pins. What gun do you use? I use a forty-five mostly. I also use a forty-one Magnum, and they both work and the, well. <laughs> And you have and six well. bowling pins? You have six, <laughs> six bowling pins on the table, right? Uh, there's different. Uh, usual, the usual set is five pins. Okay. So you have eight in the gun, except when you have a revolver, then you got six. And uh, you should be accurate, because if you miss, it starts uh, messing up your time. <laughs> and I was uh, not as accurate as I could have been, and then my times are pretty bad, <laughs> but... I did have fun. Now, do I, There's also do I remember uh, this right? It's not, it's not pardon? just a yeah, but and it's not just a case of knocking them over. You actually have to clear it, get them off the table, right? Yeah, and in most events, they have to clear the table. They got to move three feet. There's a few events where they have to go farther than that, and uh, 
and there's some events where they only have to tip over. There's a couple of those now. Oh, okay. And okay. I didn't shoot either one of those. I could have, but I, I ended up doing other stuff. Yeah, you talk about the ultimate in uh, reactive targets, just good old-fashioned bowling pins. And if you punch them with a uh, full metal jacket 9 millimeter, you might tip them over, but you're probably not going to clear the table. That's why uh, you know people are using more powerful 45s, 44 magnums, that type of deal. Lee, thank you so much. That's a great range report, and it's a reminder of a really fun event. You can do that. You can do that like formally, of course, at a real bowling pin match. Or what the heck, if you can contact your local bowling alley, pick up some da- damaged pins, because they retire those things, see if you can get them and take them out, even if it's just you and the family or some you know friends going out, set up a table and get your timer out, and you got to clear the table. You know, uh, and see who can do it the fastest. And what you're going to find is it's it's likely you're saying it's accuracy, but it's also power. It's that whole deal of the mixing the two. If you can't shoot a big magnum quickly enough, you go down. But you know what? If you go down far enough, you may end up with a round that actually won't hit hard enough to get the targets or get the pins off the table at all pretty interesting so i mean it's it's uh it, it's a fun deal i love reactive targets well don't we all i mean whether it was originally knocking over tin cans with a bb gun right or shooting crackers or wafers oh oh oh! i'd forgotten you know what we did this some years ago went to sam's club you could probably get it at costco talk about the worst thing in the world for you this huge huge uh, jar of cheese puffs. These things are like as big as a quarter, right? And these orange things. Take them out to the range, throw them on the ground, shoot them with 22, shoot them with anything. They just hop all over, they explode, they make dust. And when you're done, they're biodegradable. Leave them out there. The rain will take care of them or the birds will take care of them. Cheese puffs. I know they're crazy. I mean, they cost almost nothing for this huge jar. But if you start to pick them up, you're going to have orange hands, so I wouldn't do that. But, God, they are a lot of fun. 866-TALK-GUN. Do you have a favorite fun target? Let me know. This is Milo Lardbottom, Junior Under Assistant Deputy to the Assistant Director of Deputy Affairs for the Department of Homeland Security with a special message for listeners of Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. We know who you are. We know where you are. You're right by your radio. We have special cameras that can see into your radio. I have a special monitor built into my aluminum foil helmet. We are watching you. So don't try anything funny, buster. A go. Story says, FBI Director James B. Comey notified key members of Congress Sunday afternoon that after reviewing all of the newly discovered Hillary Clinton emails, all of them. Hmm. I thought they said there were 600,000 of them. Anyway, uh, the agency stands by its original findings against recommending charges. Comey wrote that investigators had worked, quote, around the clock, close quote, to review all the emails found on a device used by former Congressman Anthony Weiner that had been sent to or from Clinton and that, quote, we have not changed our conclusions expressed in July, close quote. Weird part is, this is the same weekend that the New York Post says that uh, Clinton would send classified emails to her maid at home to have her print them out for her, a maid without clearances, of course. So Comey is at it again. Is there any wonder he's sitting there saying, okay, she was careless and reckless, et cetera, et cetera, which generally sends people to jail with classified information. But we're not going to recommend any kind of action, legal action. Huh. Really? All righty. I'm reminded of that scene... Sean Connery and the Untouchables, where he says, what are you prepared to do? Will you make a few phone calls? How hard is that to make sure that all your friends are going to be voting in two days? 
it is, you do understand, pretty much the only card we have left to play is to simply not let her get elected. And frankly, to kick the Republicans in the shins, to say, yeah, we're doing this to you too because we don't like what you've been doing either. So we're, we're going to elect Trump. Yes, that upsets you. That's good. We've been upset for a long time. How about that? Huh. <sighs> Line one, Eric is with us out of Junction City, Kansas. Hey, Erica, you're on Gun Talk. Uh, hi, Tom. Uh, I have a voter report for you. I have voted okay. early this past Friday, and I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'm still alive by Tuesday since I'm an older person, so I voted early. <laughs> anyway, you got to get in your vote uh, while you're still around, huh? <laughs> Yeah, by four o'clock that day, I asked some of the volunteers uh, if they could tell me approximately how many people had gone through the line, how many of them voted already. And I was mm-hmm. told they already had over 1,800 voters. And normally, they would have, uh, at a year's time, if they're lucky, somewhere around 100 all day long. Now, I think this wow. is quite a bit of difference. And I waited in line for over an hour, and there were still a lot of other people waiting behind me. So I hope everybody's going out and voting. Naturally, vote for Trump. All right, um, Erica, all thank you. That, that, Everybody have a good what, day. Thank you. That's a wonderful range report. Actually, in this case, a voting report. All right, just to, to capsulize this, let me make sure you understood what Erica said. Junction City, Kansas, went to vote. It took her an hour waiting. Lots of people there. She's about there at four in the afternoon. She asked the poll workers, you know, how many do you think you've had come to vote so far? And they said about 1,800. They said, well, how does that compare with normally? So, well, in other years at this time of day on early voting, we may have had 100 people, 1,800 Versus 100. Question for you. Let me throw this out. Who's more motivated to vote? Who do you think is motivated to increase the turnout by 18 times? Do you think it's Democrats or do you think it's people who are voting for Trump? Do you think there's a groundswell? Um. 866-TALK-GUN. Line two, uh, William is in Collins, Mississippi. Uh, William's got an interesting question. Hey there. Um, love your show. Uh, the one thing we've all heard a thousand times, ignorance of uh-huh. the law is no excuse. And yet, right. Clinton and her cronies always say, well, she didn't know she was doing anything wrong. So, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I, for some, make, I have not heard anybody okay. on any talk show say that. It's and a great uh, point, and also, also, uh, William, there's another thing. And look, thanks for the call. Uh, you've got Comey, FBI director, saying, "Well, we couldn't find any intent to break the law. Who cares? There's nothing in the law that requires intent. The law was specifically written to eliminate intent." If there's intent to break the law on classified documents, it's called treason. But the law that we're talking about was written so that they would remove the aspect of intent so that you could be found guilty just by being sloppy or incompetent or inattentive because they wanted to make the point that this stuff is important. These are our nation's secrets. This is the stuff that keeps people alive. If our enemies get a hold of this, some of our people may well die. So we're going to make it really, really important, and we're going to have teeth to this law, and we're going to require you to not just not have intent, but we're going to say, if you are sloppy and you let classified documents loose, that's a crime. If you are incompetent, and you allow classified documents to get to people who are do not have clearances, that's a crime. Except that, for whatever reason, 
the director of the FBI, James Comey, says, well, we couldn't find any uh, evidence of intent, so I guess this, um, nothing to see here. Move along. Huh. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got, <laughs> I'm running along again. I, 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 I tend to do that. Let's do this. We'll take a quick break here, and then when we come back, we've got Manuel on the line. Don't go anywhere, Manuel. We'll get to with you. And then also, we'll take your calls, comments, questions. Have you early voted? What were the crowds like? What are you hearing when you talk to your friends? And yeah, I know we tend to hang out with people who kind of think the same way we do. But are you hearing any really staunch defense of Hillary Clinton? Are there people who just say, oh, yeah, she is the end all and be all? Or are you hearing, oh, yeah, I just but I don't like Trump, so. I don't know. 866-TALK-GUN. When the U.S. military's elite units and law enforcement agencies across the globe demanded innovation and reliability, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. When world champion professional shooters demanded precision accuracy, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. So it's no surprise more and more civilian gun owners are refusing to settle for anything less. They're choosing Sig Sauer firearms, ammunition, electro optics, suppressors, air guns, and training. Sig Sauer. Never settle. Tired of searching the web for the best deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gun Dealio app today for deals and discounts right at your fingertips. Handguns, rifles, shotguns, ammo, optics, lasers, gun safes, targets, gun cleaners, grips, slings, and much, much more. Save money on products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gun Dealio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. Perhaps more than any other landscape, Wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. The time is now to band together. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. This is Jeff with Black Hills Ammunition. Our Honey Badger line now features a new 40 Smith & Wesson caliber loading. Gelatin testing shows that this round outperforms conventional hollow points, not only in terms of velocity, penetration, and weight retention, but it also provides superior temporary cavities. The profile and solid copper construction assure flawless feeding. This is the latest technology in handgun performance. Black Hills Ammunition. The power of performance. The Armed Citizen Legal Defense Network is a big family of gun owners standing together to protect individual members from unmeritorious prosecution after an act of self-defense. Our network family now exceeds 17,000 members protected by a $2 million legal defense fund. Shouldn't you be part of the network, too? Join the family at armedcitizensnetwork.org. That's armedcitizensnetwork.org or call 360-978-5200. All right, back with you. Last day of June 2019. Yeah, we had a little uh, technical glitch. Had to play a little snippet of a previous show, but we're back for sure right now. Going uh, to the phones, line five. Steve is with us out of Wichita, Kansas. What you been shooting there, Steve? Well, Tom, your tip about reactive targets is a really good combination with teaching new shooters how to shoot and to enjoy the uh, sport. And yeah. So what we? I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so we offer a Boy Scout rifle and shotgun merit badge each fall here in Kansas. We've been doing it for over 12 years. And, uh, of course, shotguns always have a reactive target. That's a piece of cake. It's just a, it's a clay bird, ultimate reactive target. 
Well, our boys tend to earn the merit badges pretty quick in their scouting career, and so after that, you want to keep them interested in the shooting sports. You have a mix of older boys who've earned their merit badge and younger scouts who have not earned it yet. Those go through quickly on the younger scouts. They get priority on rifle range or shotgun range. So we've had to develop fun shoots. And your tip on the on the uh, clay, excuse me, on the uh, the head, excuse me, the uh, cheese puffs worked out great. We put those on toothpicks at 50 feet, and the boys oh. learned to really use their sights and blow those apart. Um, we also introduced uh, eggs and hollow points. We call that huevos splateros, and the boys love to bust an <laughs> egg with a hollow point. It's, it's quite spectacular. It's string slime everywhere, and it's biodegradable. But in the mm-hmm. fall, we've also got uh, Osage oranges or hedge balls ripe here, and that's always oh, been a, a biodegradable target. And uh, we've worked out several games with those, but last year was most successful. Uh, one of our problems is that after the boys earn their rifle merit badge, they tend to re- leave the rifle range. They want to play knockout on the shotgun line. And so the rifle range is under-attended. So we, to drum up that interest and the interest in marksmanship, we've uh, developed a little contraption that has a spring-loaded trigger that you trap a hedge ball in between two posts, and you chip away at the hedge ball with hollow-point bullets. You get five shots to bust the hedge ball apart. And once right. the hedge ball uh, compresses, that releases a clay bird, a clay bird throw. So you've got a squad of three scouts. One's the rifleman. His job is to bust the hedge ball. And then you've got two shotgunners. And the first guy in the squad has a chance to break the, the bird as it throws. The second guy is his backup. The points are awarded based on the minimum number of shots to get this accomplished. The boys love it. It's a smash hit. <laughs> anyway, reactive targets and scouts are great. I uh, just know, want to pass uh, those yeah. tips along in case other people are working with scout troops and trying to introduce new shooters to biodegradable reactive targets and the approach to combining the shotgun and the rifle skills into a squad, and that's worked very well for us here in Kansas. That is terrific. Steve, thank you so much. That's a really neat idea. And for those who don't know, if you've ever seen a, a Osage orange uh, hedge ball is... Uh, maybe a little bit big, bigger than a softball, but they're pretty hard. And uh, as kids, you know, you get to throw in those things, you can hurt somebody with it. But that's a great idea. Reactive targets, that's the way to go. J- Jim just said during the break, he said he just bought uh, a big, one of those big canisters of them at Sam's, like $7. You, just, you can't find any cheaper targets out there. Uh, and they're they're fun. They just explode. What we did, we went out to a range where it was safe to do this, okay, and we put them up on the ground, kind of at the base of the berm, and just scatter them around. And then you give somebody a, a 22, something like a 1022 or a 22 pistol, and let them shoot the chief's puffs. And they're everywhere. And you just go and go and go. And all you want to do is just reload and keep shooting. Just fun. Oh, he says oh, Oreo cookies are fun, too. I'm getting this note here. Cool idea. I guess any kind of cookie, any, you know. At a certain point, you start shopping in terms of uh, shape, size, color, and cost. Cheaper being better. We're not going to be buying expensive stuff because we're just shooting and leaving it. But I do like the idea of biodegradable targets, things you can shoot that you can leave at the range. That's, uh, I think that's a, a pretty neat way to go as well. So just uh, food for thought there. Let's see here. Line four, Jerome's out of Utah. Jerome, you got targets you're thinking about? Yeah, I like it, and uh, uh, maybe I'll buy them at Kent's. Uh, they put up a new sign, now selling ammunition. Your local grocery Island. store is anyway. selling ammo? Yes. Yes, Kent's Groceries are, are, are markets. They're, they're, they're a Utah chain. Um, I don't know how many Kent's uh, stores there are around here, but I know there's one in Clearfield, Utah, and they put that sign up. That is very cool. That, that's what I would call that an encouraging sign when grocery stores add ammo to their lineup that they're offering. That's a cool report. That's a now that's a range report for you, Jerome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're uh, up in Idaho right now, up in uh, McCall. They got Ridley's is a grocery store there, and you go in and they got sushi and groceries and Glocks and ammo and guns and ammo. It is the coolest thing. You get all your supplies there. 866-TALK-GUN. All right, back with you here. Going straight to Frank. He's in Arnett, Oklahoma on two. Hello, Frank. Got a question for us. Uh, well, I found a way to, uh, real good for storing my ammo and keeping the moisture off. Oh? 
What do you I do? I buy the death kit in five, ten pound containers and then buy those uh, disposable tea bags that are about two by three or three by four. And uh, I can dehydrate it after it's absorbed moisture and stuff. And I'll put it in my ammo boxes. And also I vacuum seal it in with, you know, mm-hmm. five or six boxes of reloaded ammo. And it works real good to keep, uh, sort the moisture. And uh, and about once a month, uh, once it's in the ammo boxes, I'll pull them out and swap them and, and follow the directions on the temperature and everything and dehydrate them and, st- and use right. them. Right. You, you can reheat the, yeah, you can reheat that desiccant and get the moisture out of it and reuse it, right? Yeah, and that buying in the bulk by the five ten pound canister, it makes it very economical. And put and those disposable tea bags work real oh. good. They're kind of a, I don't know, paper cloth combination, right. kind of like a old uh, Slick. tobacco bag. <laughs> ah, okay, well, good deal. I had not thought of that. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate that. Hey, uh, Tim, don't go anywhere. We're going to get you in here uh, probably in the after show, but I do want to make a point here. If you watched. And you may not have. Uh, if you watched any of the Democrat Party candidates in their debate, what you saw was a race to see who could go the farthest to the left, a race to see who could call for the most extreme gun control measures. And frankly, they all have pretty much decided that it's okay to be open about it and to call for gun confiscation. So I don't care if it's the insignificant ones like Eric Swalwell from California, or it's the leaders like uh, Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, they're all calling for gun control. They're all calling for gun confiscation. In Biden's case, he wants us to have imaginary guns and we couldn't buy anything else. He wants everybody to be able to, well, any gun sold would have to be a smart gun. Now, understand, they don't actually work. They don't actually exist. But Joe Biden says you should not be able to buy one. It's our right to do this. And I say, you know what? If that's a good idea, sir, if you think that's a good, strong, solid idea, my deal is this. We will put that up to a vote after you've required all law enforcement officers in the country to use smart guns for two years. Well, yeah, but they have to use them to save their lives, as do we. So you get the nation's law enforcement agencies to all adopt smart guns and have them decide that, yes, we like these and we want to continue to use these. And after you do a two-year program, and I'm talking Secret Service, Capitol Police, FBI, Sheriff's Departments, Police Departments, once they all say, yes, smart guns are great, which they won't. Why is that? It's like saying, I want an experimental parachute. It might work. It might not work. I don't know. Let's find out. That's just dumb. But then again, it is Joe Biden. So I repeat myself. Well, it's the summertime. Get out, do some shooting. Take the family with you. Invite, you know what? Invite your neighbors. Hey, I'm going to go to the range. Would you be interested in going shooting? You'll be amazed if you do this one Second Amendment activist thing, inviting somebody to go shooting with you, you will be amazed at how many people will say, you know, I haven't shot in years. I would love to go. If you have teenage kids, have them bring a friend out, one per child, one per your children. You don't want to have a whole herd out there. But it's a great way to get your kids out and introduce shooting to other children. Obviously, check with their parents first. All righty, have a great week out there. I'm going to go do some shooting. (laughs) Take care.